was to learn a bit uh, about the integration of renewables uh, here in Ireland. And uh, what I have uh, heard so far clearly indicates to me uh, that uh, Ireland uh, is uh, really on the forefront here and uh, maybe you become the powerhouse uh, for renewable integration and we all uh, can learn from you. But uh, let me tell you a bit uh, where we are uh, at the European level uh, with the integration of renewables. Before I go into that, um, one just brief uh, introduction to, to see if the integration of renewable is an important thing that uh, needs to be done in order to complete the internal energy market in Europe. But uh, it is by far not the only thing to be done. And you all, or most of you, might have heard about um, the project that we want to build a European Energy Union. And this European Energy Union is uh, based mainly on five pillars. The first pillar here is uh, the security of supply uh, based on solidarity between member states. Very important issue on which we are currently working. Notably, how to implement this solidarity aspect. Uh, then, the second is the completion of the internal energy market. This is uh, my uh, task in, uh, in the Director General for Energy. Uh, I have to see how far can I push it during my lifetime uh, to get uh, to the internal energy market. And there, of course, one of the issues is also how to integrate uh, renewables. The third uh, issue is energy efficiency. Here we still see uh, a huge potential in order uh, to uh, cope with the problem of security of supply because the best energy is the one that is not uh, needed. Uh, the fourth is innovation and technology. Also one uh, for the energy sector, a very important uh, component that is absolutely needed if we want uh, to build uh, uh, an internal energy market and to get to more efficiency. And last but not least, it's the decarbonization of our economy. Uh, that is uh, what uh, is our guiding uh, force uh, over time. This will not come, not today, not tomorrow. It will take some time, but uh, we have a clear roadmap uh, for the time being until 2050. And that brings me now uh, to um, my first. No, sorry, I lost the one again. Maybe. Sorry. Yes, I have it now. Um, this links now up to the, what we call the uh, no regret scenario for Europe. You will find these five uh, pillars more or less uh, in this because this is our, these are our guiding principles, our overarching objectives on which we want to build our European energy policy. You have the three big objectives with competitiveness, sustainability and security of supply. The magic triangle of objectives. And then you have the driving forces in order to reach not one after the other, but in the ideal world, all three together. And that is, we need competitive markets, we need energy efficiency, we need renewable sources, we need diversification of supply, routes and suppliers, uh, important, and we need a smart infrastructure. This is all together is really what uh, guides us in uh, formulating our policy. Now, what is the electricity market structure today? The core principles uh, for us are we want to have, first and foremost, a market-based approach. And market here in the energy sector means for us we need many buyers, we need many sellers, uh, and uh, that the price is determined by those buyers and sellers, uh, and uh, the influence of the governments should be reduced to the minimum. We have on the other side a regulated part, which is uh, the grid infrastructure and the system management, for very good reasons, because that's the backbone for the whole system. And then, for the time being, 
we have renewables exempted from this market. Why was it though? Uh, at the time when we started to develop the European policy, the renewables, wind, solar, have not been ready for being uh, put into the market uh, scheme uh, because if we have done so, they would never have taken off because uh, uh, their technology was not mature and too costly. So it was only possible with uh, high subsidies and keeping them uh, away from the market. This, in the meantime, has changed. So that uh, illustrates a bit where we are uh, today with the system. On the right, you have uh, the different support schemes uh, for renewables in whole Europe. The orange, uh, that's a, a, a quota uh, system. The green are uh, feed-in tariffs. There you see also um, Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. And uh, you have the blue ones, uh, feed-in premiums. You see quite a colorful uh, picture, uh, but that is the situation today. And on the left side, you have the same thing on capacity market uh, proposals. You have the green ones, uh, energy only market, that means no capacity uh, mechanisms at all. You have uh, the blue ones, the proposal for new capacity uh, elements. Um, and uh, um, what is it? Uh, the uh, actual, uh, capacity mechanisms and uh, uh, major capacity mechanisms. Uh, so also here you see quite a diversity. Uh, diversity. Both of course cannot uh, stand uh, forever because these kinds of differences, diversi uh, diversities, that uh, hampers the development of the market. And therefore it is important uh, to work on both, on the support schemes in the context of uh, the integration of renewables and uh, capacity uh, mechanisms in the context of the new market design for uh, the electricity market, which uh, is an ongoing work uh, at the Commission. We have just closed our uh, public consultation on this issue and we are working towards uh, legal proposals for the end of next year. I have two slides, uh, very interesting, and uh, I have put them because they are so positive for Ireland. Uh, uh, that show you uh, a bit uh, what is behind the diversity of uh, the, the schemes. When you look at the costs of renewables as a share of electricity price, you see uh, a tremendous uh, difference, differences. You have uh, on the left side Germany. We pay what it costs. Uh, and then you have on the uh, right side Poland, but forget Poland uh, because they don't even have a, a renewable policy, so it's no wonder that they are far off. So the best uh, ratio that you can find is here. And that shows one thing to me at least, is that here in Ireland you have <coughs> been right in choosing the most cost-efficient way to integrate or to take in uh, renewables. And that's laudable. That's exactly what we think should be done. On Germany, I have to say, they are doing now better because they have reformed the system, because even a rich country like Germany could not afford over a long period to spend uh, so much money uh, for that. Spain, uh, the same, uh, also reforming now and uh, doing much, much uh, better. But for Ireland, uh, what I have said initially, you are already at a very, very good uh, platform from which you can develop new solutions, more solutions uh, than are needed. The other is the cost-effective use of renewable resources. The, the um, red uh, dot are subsidized over production costs. And um, the, the, the gray so, uh, are, uh, are the uh, production costs and then the green ones are the subsidies below production costs. Here, the same picture. You have a number, you can see that quite clearly, a number of member states where you have subsidies um, beyond production costs. This is distorting. It's clearly distorting and has to stop. 
Uh, again, island, uh, when I can uh, see it, left is the wind, uh, you are still very good. In, uh, where are you? To the left there? Yes, the third. You are still uh, below and uh, also uh, uh, here, I think, uh, also with the solar. No, there you are. That's uh, something we can discuss. <laughs> so, <laughs> electricity market structure now, that's the transition that was already uh, mentioned. We know we have targets for 2020, but uh, not only for 2020, the European Council has already uh, decided for the uh, targets uh, 2030. And uh, this decision of the European Council clearly means more renewables, cross board more renewables, otherwise uh, we cannot uh, fulfill the new CO2 reduction target, which is minus 40% by 2030. It's out of the question. And even the 27% uh, average at European level uh, will be just about to make it there and only if some <coughs> more uh, than they want. Here, I want to show you one state of play 2020 target. I have only singled out Ireland. Today, I learned that our forecast 2020 um, Projection might be too optimistic because we in the Commission we think we still believe that Ireland will make it. You see, 2013 we have been at 7.3, and our projection shows 18.4, and your target was 60. So you would be clearly above. But in the discussions this morning, there were doubts raised that the 16% will be uh, achieved by uh, 2020. I personally still have I'm on the positive side. So before. It is not proven. Ireland is still on the positive list, at least with me. Uh, here you have the um, uh, summary of uh, the 2020 and 2030 targets. You see first uh, the greenhouse gas emission reduction, 2020 minus 20 percent. Here we still believe that we are uh, we are good. We might end up at 21, so we will just make it. Uh, but uh, 2030 is around the corner, and then we double it to 40%, which it, uh, really uh, asks for a, a huge uh, effort. Then uh, the renewable energy, 20%, 2020. Uh, but there, this 20% have been broken down by member states, and we have seen for Ireland there were 60% for other member states or more. Now we are going uh, for 2030 uh, to at least 27%, this time average EU. That was a compromise that uh, uh, had to be uh, accepted. Uh, this will be accompanied uh, by a kind of uh, governance uh, system. And then you have the energy efficiency, 20% uh, 2020. We will fall short of that, uh, uh, but for 2030, it's uh, again at least 27, but the Parliament and the Commission has already promised to the Parliament to support 30%. Um, and then you have the interconnection uh, targets, uh, 2020, 10% for electricity, uh, interconnectivity, and we will raise that to 2030 to 15%. So this is the uh, new market design. These are the, the goals, and if you want to achieve these goals, you have to come forward with uh, policy measures. And um, that means that, uh, and I said that, renewables in this system uh, play a dominant, predominant role. For the CO2 reduction target, for the renewable target, uh, uh, all together. And uh, that means more and more, the share of renewables in most of the member states will uh, raise, in Ireland too. And that has impact on the market, but also on the system uh, uh, that is operated. And that also has to be uh, taken into account when we come to uh, the policy shaping. Here I just want to uh, show you what does it mean integrating uh, uh, variable uh, renewables and why does it uh, require a new thinking. Here you have uh, two days, one is in December and one is in, in, in June. Uh, here on the left uh, in December, you have uh, very little uh, renewables production um, 
and uh, at the same time a high demand. So here we have a mismatch, uh, not enough uh, 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 energy. On the other side, it's exactly uh, the opposite. We have high uh, production in renewables, but a lower demand. And again, we have a problem because the, the right one stresses the system, and the left one, we, have, we fall short, and we have to see where we get uh, back up so that uh, uh, the energy, energy supply is, is guaranteed. So at the same time, we have to deal with both uh, cases, and that requires, as you can see, a new thinking. So what is the new thinking? And this is now uh, uh, our policy answer to it. The first very important uh, uh, statement that I want to make is that very often when you hear about integration of renewables into the market at the uh, European level, we are just, you're, very often you only hear something about uh, the green uh, pillar that I will uh, uh, put forward in a minute. But that's not true. That's only half of the truth. It is not possible just to take the necessary measures that I will list in a moment for integrating renewables into the market. We also have, at the same time in parallel, also making the market fit for the renewables. The one cannot go without the other. If we would only uh, take the measures to integrate the renewables, we would fail. Uh, we also need uh, uh, some clear market measures in order to um, uh, welcome the uh, renewables in the market. So what it is, it is now uh, um, in detail. Integrating the renewables into the market requires that all uh, producers of uh, whatever generation uh, have a balancing responsibility. All. That's the first uh, uh, requirement. The second requirement is uh, all the priority rules on the dispatching, which exist for renewables, but also in uh, different forms, for instance, even for coal, have to go. There's no, absolutely no room for a priority rule for dispatching anymore. Then um, the renewables have to be sold into the market. That also means that uh, it should, the market should not be distorted uh, through or by uh, subsidies that uh, keep renewables within the market uh, in a, a favorable position. We have to discuss what kind of support is necessary and we have also said that there is a transition necessary. We cannot strip away all the subsidies for renewables uh, from one day to the other. But we have to have a clear idea what kind of support schemes, how do, should they look like. They should be open uh, also uh, for uh, others coming out uh, from other member states. Uh, you know that the Commission does not, uh, uh, let's say, um, uh, want to see uh, feed-in tariffs. That's a problem here for Ireland. We are more for uh, hidden premiums. Uh, or other forms, uh, also uh, bringing this to the market by a bidding system, auctioning system that we are testing uh, currently in Germany. And uh, we need a much more coordinated approach uh, for support schemes at the regional level. As I have just said, it is not only uh, in one member state we want to open these uh, schemes up uh, for the regional level. This is on the uh, integrating side, uh, integration side of renewables. Now we come to the market. What do we need to do at the same time for the market to make the market fit to uh, take uh, the renewables in? We need short-term measures because uh, we have the problem. If we say we want to give balancing responsibility, we have to give the uh, producers of renewables the possibility to get in almost real-time uh, the necessary uh, uh, capacities that they need in order to balance uh, their portfolio. That means we need uh, intraday market coupling uh, and we need uh, uh, balancing markets uh, and um, um, greater bidding zones. The next is um, market rules uh, have to be uh, compatible uh, with uh, uh, renewables. 
We have to uh, take away all the discriminations that might be uh, might still exist between technologies. We have to be uh, technologically uh, neutral also on on the market side. We need uh, flexibility options, and here uh, it's uh, demand side management. Here you still see demand side response, but I don't like the word response. From it's more management that is needed. A very important pillar in the system. Uh, because uh, we see also uh, a functioning demand side management can really um, make the difference uh, for the integration of renewables uh, in uh, the whole system. And especially the short, in the short term, you can see good results if you start uh, uh, using the demand side management uh, with uh, existing industries where it is possible. And at a further stage and also in aggregated form taken in the households. And then, last but not least, we need uh, new hatching tools. Uh, all this together, uh, we have to uh, cope with the risks that are uh, inherent of uh, all this and uh, this, uh, therefore, we need uh, hatching tools. So, this, uh, in, on one slide, is, if you want, uh, our idea from how we integrate at European level renewables into the market. By working at the same time on very focused and very targeted uh, measures to the renewable system, but at the same time also uh, changing uh, some market rules uh, in the market in order to make it compatible. And that has to happen at the same time. It cannot uh, be done in sequence. My last slide uh, is about investments. Because this, uh, in, in the upcoming years, is the challenge uh, uh, for renewables. Because what we see is that for the renewables, once they are installed, they are well off. Because uh, they are working uh, towards zero marginal cost. But there is high uh, or great big capital needed in order to install uh, renewables at the market. And what we need here is we need a clear framework for giving incentives to investors to invest in uh, building new capacities for renewables. And uh, that for the moment uh, is a problem and this problem has uh, different uh, facets. One clearly is uh, that uh, things that happened in Spain or in Czech Republic where over a running period, uh, investment period, they have changed retroactively uh, the, um, the remuneration for the investments is the killer for uh, the investment climate. If uh, this uh, is not only, it was not only an issue for Spain and Czech Republic, it really has uh, uh, done a lot of harm to the investment reputation of uh, the European energy market as such. And we have to make sure that these kinds of uh, things uh, remain exceptions. Because the investors, first and foremost, need a stable, predictable uh, framework in which uh, they can invest over many, many years uh, huge amounts of uh, money. And that, uh, for me, is the first thing. Secondly, and uh, here um, I address myself also to my friend Gary, uh, we need, uh, I, I leave out the Irish uh, regulator, but we need also from the regulator side a more proactive approach towards investment decisions. <laughs> that they are ready to take also, I know for a regulator, regulator it is difficult to hear, but I tell you, you have to take also as a regulator certain risks. Uh, there is no investment without uh, risk and uh, you have to uh, take that also into account and you should uh, bear that in mind. I think we need a discussion. There are regulators like Irish one, but others, they have already this positive attitude to investment, but I can tell you from experience, there are a lot of uh, member states, regulators, they are even counterproductive uh, to these investments. That, of course, uh, goes together uh, with uh, synergies that we have to find. Uh, we have to find uh, a new, approaches 
good example is cooling and heating. Also something I heard this morning is very uh, high on the agenda in Ireland, and in my view, rightly so. If we want uh, to fulfill all the objectives that I have mentioned, we have to go also with renewables into this uh, sector, cooling and heating. And last but not least, I mentioned the uh, development uh, of technologies and innovation. The new uh, electricity market or energy market will not uh, be developed in due time if we do not support heavily uh, innovation and uh, research uh, on uh, new technologies. Uh, even uh, those that are mature, like wind and solar, there's still room for improvements, for uh, new developments. Uh, in solar, uh, it is quite obvious. Uh, everybody is complaining that we have lost the production of the panels to China. Yeah, but now they do it, we buy it cheaper than uh, we had uh, uh, constructed ourselves. But what is missing, we should be, as Europeans, already on the market with the second or third generation of uh, panels and doing the business. Being in the lead of the technology. So let the Chinese uh, uh, build the first generation, but then we should come immediately on the market with the second generation that is improved with our know-how. And that we have to do on a large scale. Solar is only an example, I think, also when it comes to the windmills or other uh, uh, wave energy, all what have you. There is a huge potential uh, for Europe uh, to be, at least uh, from the technological point of view, uh, in the lead. So that was in a nutshell a bit uh, what uh, we have in mind, and I hope it is uh, enough thought for discussions afterwards. Thank you very much.